Hi there, students. OK, to complain. If you complain, it means that you tell someone you're not happy with the service that you've received, yeah? So if you go to a restaurant and the food is just too salty to eat, you complain, you complain to the waiter. But we've got lots and lots of different words in English which mean to complain. OK, the first one that came to mind here is to moan, OK? So he's always moaning about his problems, yeah? OK, a moan is oh, oh, the same as a groan. Oh. I think you moan and you groan when you eat too much food. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, but we also use moan and groan metaphorically to mean to complain. Yeah, I would say groaning and moaning is a medium level complaint. OK, medium level complaining. Yeah, um, it, ha it implies a little bit of criticism. He's always moaning about his problems. Yeah, OK, so notice these two. It implies a little bit of criticism. The next one I have is to bellyache. OK, your belly, your stomach aches. So he's always bellying, ache, belly aching about his problems. To bellyache, this is really quite critical of the person complaining. Yeah, it's suggesting they're complaining about nothing. Yeah, I think if somebody is belly aching about something, you don't think it's... Uh, uh, really something that's worth complaining about, yeah? It's like complaining about a stomach ache. Well, it hurts, but what are you going to do? And I think probably to belly aches a little bit more than a mid-level com complaint. Maybe six, six and a half. To grumble, yeah? Okay, he's always grumbling about his problems. I think this one's probably less than groan and moan, maybe a four, yeah? Um, he, he always likes to grumble about his medical problems, but there is still a degree of criticism that he's always grumbling, quit your grumbling, yeah? Notice, quit your groaning, quit your moaning, quit your belly aching, quit your grumbling, quit grumbling. Okay, so I also think this word grumble, I hear this word a rumble, the thunder rumble. Yeah, so there's this noise. Okay, to grouse. Okay, he's grousing about his problems again. Um, I think to grouse is probably the same sort of level as grumble. I think maybe if somebody's grousing, there is a, a degree of criticism, but not so great. Yeah. Not a, not, a, not a very great criticism. Maybe what they're grousing about is quite reasonable. Yeah. OK. Let's look at the next one. Grouch. OK. Well, the first thing, grouch, to grouch. What are you grouching about? But I think of the word grouchy. If somebody's grouchy, they're bad-tempered. I don't know if you ever watch Sesame Street. But there's one of the characters who's always really, really bad-tempered. And they call him the Grouch, OK? Because he's always grouchy, yeah? So here again, if somebody's grouchy, you're saying they're bad-tempered. And maybe you're saying that they're complaining because they're grouching. But they're a grouchy person as well, yeah? So it has this idea of criticism again. OK, the next one is growl. OK, a dog growled. Grrr, yeah? He growled at me. Grrr, but no more. And that's all it means, yeah? He's growling about his problems? No. Quit growling? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's not something I would use really to complain. I'd use, he, he growled at me to show that he was in a bad temper, in a bad mood about something. Yeah. And the next one, grunt, is an, another animal word. A pig grunts. <coughs> yeah. A dog growls. <coughs> yeah. And a pig grunts. <coughs> um, 
he grunted something about the fact that he didn't like the food. You could probably say that. It's pretty metaphorical, though. Yeah? Um... I remember once a long time ago I was staying with some people on this big farm and the mother was always really good tempered in the mornings but all her sons and her husband whenever they came came down for breakfast the only thing they'd do is just grunt <clears throat> and no more. Do you want some bacon and eggs? <clears throat> that was it. So grunt maybe but it's not quite this idea of uh, um, of complaint, yeah? Just to show you're unhappy. Okay, to gripe. Well, I think gripe goes quite well with grizzle, the next one. Um, a baby gripes. I think they have a product called gripe water, or they used to, which is something you give a baby to make it gripe less, to make it complain less, yeah? To make it grizzle less. Okay, so to gripe. It sounds like a baby. What are you griping about? Quit griping. I could say that. I think gripes, full, maybe four on our level of intensity about complaint. And the other one, grizzle. Well, with grizzle, the first thing that comes to my mind is the word grizzly. Yeah, a grizzly bear. Or a grizzly situation. OK, there was a grisly sight after the bomb exploded with pieces of bodies everywhere. Yeah. Um, so to grizzle, the baby was grizzling because he had pain in his teeth. Yeah, maybe. But it's not a, it's not a word I would really use meaning complain. Yeah, um, I think grizzly is more to the point as an adjective. And that means horrible. Yeah something really nasty and uh, mm, full of blood maybe full of gore yeah there was a gorish grisly scene at the end of the film yeah i don't know if you've seen any of the fort saw films but they're pretty grisly okay what about to grudge well to hold a grudge is to have a vendetta against something just a little one not a huge one yeah um, so, uh, this, uh, yeah, in Romeo and Juliet, the, the two families have a grudge against each other. Well, more like a vendetta. Okay, so if you grudge someone something, you will let them have it. You will grudgingly give it to them. You will give it to them, but you're not happy about giving it to them, yeah? You think they owe you something, yeah? So he grudgingly gave me some of his chocolate. I think he wanted to eat all of it. And he grudged me a little bit. Yeah? Okay, to mutter. Well, the basic meaning of mutter is when you, do, when you talk not very clearly. Yeah? Um, but he was muttering. Yeah? When he heard the, all through the speech, he was muttering to himself. Or he was muttering. This has an idea of complaining. Yeah? Okay, so to mutter. This is going to be a little, a low, low, low level complaint, yeah? Okay. Um, and um, to murmur as well. To murmur is even quieter than mutter. Murmur is just hear a noise. Um, I explained my new plan and the new policy, and I thought there were, was going to be a lot of moaning and... Uh, grumbling about it but there was not a murmur in the room so nobody said anything nobody complained yeah um but very low level okay what about the next one to nag well to nag is to cut to complain constantly yeah to pester someone about it but normally to nag is to say again and again don't do this don't do this. Don't do this. Yeah? Okay. Um, a nag is also an old horse. Yeah? But to nag, to com continually complain to someone or complain about something. Yeah? I had a few nagging doubts about the uh, validity of my theory. So what about the next one? To niggle. Okay, to niggle 
is to complain about something that's very, very small and unimportant. Yeah? So if you're niggling, this is very... Uh, the, the person who say, says you are niggling is being critical of you. They are saying you're complaining for nothing. Yeah? Okay? Um, niggle is really quite critical in that thing. You're complaining about things that don't matter, that have no relevance. Okay, and the next one, yap, to yap. Okay, a little dog yaps. Yap, 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 yap. Um, what are you yapping about? What are you talking about? What are you complaining about? I think this is just conceivably on the edge of to complain, yeah? They were all yapping about the fact that they uh, didn't have their break today. Yapping, complaining in this case, but... It's got the idea of niggling, yapping, complaining about something that's not relevant, yeah? Okay. To snarl. Okay, a dog. <laughs> to snarl, yeah? Okay, so he snarled at me. It's talking, snarl is talking about the way someone uh, talks. It's the method of delivery, okay? So, complain, well, it shows they're unhappy. Next one I quite like, kvetch. Okay, this is an American word, it's not a British word, um, and it's clearly come from the Yiddish, and that's why it's more common in the US. Okay, to kvetch is to, uh, is to complain constantly, yeah? Okay, so somebody who's always nagging, is always kvetching, yeah? They're always complaining, on and on and on, yeah? To kvetch, to complain about something, yeah? Continually. You could also call a person a kvetch, yeah? Okay, a complainer, a constant complainer, yeah? Um, yeah, this is critical as well. Okay, he's kvetching about his problems again. So let's just go through them. Groan and moan. Well, probably you're groaning and moaning about something that you don't like. It implies a little bit of criticism of the person who's groaning, but maybe a medium-level complaint. To bellyache, okay, to complain about something consistently. But again, it's criticising the person who's complaining. Um, to grumble, to complain about something, and to grouse, complaining about something. I think these two are less critical of the person who's complaining, yeah? Um, okay, he's grousing about this, he's grumbling about this. The best word is complain, if you want to be neutral and not criticise the person. Although he's grumbling about this, he's grousing about this, it's quite reasonable. Okay, grouch, grouchy, bad-tempered, yeah? I think that's the best idea with grouch, yeah? Okay, so he grouchily got out of bed to growl, grrr, like a dog. He growled his complaint, yeah? To grunt, uh, uh. to gripe, a baby gripes, so he complains because he's in pain or he doesn't have something he wants. But notice gripe is quite a low level complaint, yeah, and it implies that what you're doing, what you're complaining about is reasonable. To mutter, he muttered under something under his breath about being unhappy about the situation, okay, so to mutter. Yeah, he muttered something, but really mutter is just to talk quietly so and the people who are around you can't hear. OK, a murmur to murmur. He murmured something about not liking it. The same with mutter, but murmur is even quieter. Yeah, to nag, to complain about something constantly again and again and again. You could have a nagging doubt that won't go away to niggle. To complain about something that's small and irrelevant and not and not really important. To yap, to yap like a, st a small dog. Come on, quit your yapping and get back to work. To kvetch from German, a Yiddish word, meaning to complain constantly, to nag. And that's it. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. It's quite a long one. Um, if you did, subscribe to my channel, give the video a rating, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.